and build outs for guys that, you know, a lot of us are the same. We always wanted to do something like this, and all of my customers are professionals that later in life have found a means to do it, and I like to fuel the passion and encourage them, which their wives may or may not like, but they come down and, um, you know, I try and model the business around guys that want to grow with us, uh, you know, and, and grow with BGB. Well, that, that's so cool. It's, it's kind of unusual that the California guys end up in Florida, I know, right? I know. So there's another guy, a California guy, who uh, I spoke with just recently, Tommy Kendall, TK. Yeah, I love TK right? and our so, good friends, So I, I met him just a few weeks ago. I, yeah. I've, I've known of TK for years. Um, you know, I was involved in IMSA back in the 80s, sort of in the heydays of when, when he was racing as well. So it was a real cool thing to be able to meet him. But that's... That's the only other real California guy. I, I had the Strattons on uh, probably about six months ago, and they're California guys now, but you know they're into buses and Volkswagen stuff, but also tons of Porsche stuff. Yep. So there are some guys, but it's, uh, it's kind of few. So it's really cool to hear. I had no idea that you were a California guy. And, and I was actually living in Manhattan Beach, where, where I think TK grew up, but he's... You know, you heard me say this before. He comes from an era where we had what I would call real race car drivers. And uh, I say that because nowadays everyone wants to be a race car driver, and it's it's really hard to make it in this business. But he comes from a time where, you know, they threw you in the deep end, and you it was either sink or swim. And he did a heck of a job uh, becoming a phenomenal, you know, Trans Am driver. And he, you know, has, does less driving now and more is an, of an on-air personality. But much like you, myself, and everybody else here, he's a car guy. And I think that's the common thread with all these guys is we all grew up loving things on four wheels that, that, that make strange smells and, and, and odd noises. And, and it's, a, it's a passion for a lot of us. That's funny, uh, the, the odd noise thing. Yeah. You know, they're odd, but sometimes they're familiar. So about three weeks ago, I had the privilege of going to an event with the dealership with Porsche South Orlando that we did with another racer okay. in California. Okay. Um, you know, with the racers group, okay. you you know who I'm talking about, Kevin, Kevin Buckler, yep, right? Yep, yep. So he he threw this really cool event, and we participated in it. We brought some cars out to support it. He was introducing a new line of wines yes. from Adobe yes. Road, yes. some awesome wines, and the 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 amount of time and effort that they put into developing this line of wines, just from a a winemaker standpoint, yep. was fantastic. Uh, but the amount of effort that they put in to tie motorsports into the branding of the wines, yeah. it was just off the charts. Nope. Uh, and it's just so cool to see that. So I'll finish up my story and I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish up your thought because something just came into your mind. Yep. Um, table it first. <laughs> um, I drove a GT3 RS out okay. to the event. Okay. And right out of that, Where was the event? it was out at the, uh, out at the Waldorf Astoria okay. here okay. near Disney. Yep. And he put on an awesome, uh, awesome event. And I got out of that GT3 RS into my 1989 911 Targa 3.2. Yep. And I thought to myself, Is this thing broken? What, what, what's going to happen? You know, what's going to be my, what, what am I going to feel like? Am I going to, you know, but you know the thing was? I wasn't disappointed at all because there was a direct, there was a linkage to it. And like the gearbox sound was kind of the same. The rawness of the two cars was kind of the same. So it was like, this is totally cool. I wasn't disappointed at all. I'm like, this is what Porsche is all about. It's it's about the connections that they constantly bring from their racing history and heritage all the way current to, to modern technology. And I just thought, you know, it was such a cool experience to be able to do that. You know, to go. so what, what was your thought? Well, my thought was is that Kevin does a, a phenomenal job at marketing the the Porsche passion with, with whatever product relationship he's trying to cultivate. And actually he's somebody that over the years uh, from that perspective, I've tried to emulate. But let's talk more about your your story about getting into a car that's 40 years older than. Well, whatever. I'm not good at math. It's okay. Neither. I don't math. Um, the RS is an amazing piece of technology, and the, and how those cars have evolved over the year is pretty phenomenal. But at the same time, you cannot replicate that visceral experience that you get only from an older Porsche. Um, no ABS, no PSM, no sound deadening material, no cup holders, no ventilated seats, no creature comforts, and you can, and, and it still smells like your childhood. I'm sure every time, and that it makes that strange sound when you open the door That's that right. only a Porsche does. And um, I don't think you can replicate that with with a lot of other cars because with most cars, you're so happy to be in the newer iteration of it. 
Whereas with the Porsche, you find yourself like appreciating that older vintage. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes, you know, full spectrum. It goes both ways, you know, to, to bringing out the heritage, bringing out those, like you said, the, you, you sort of get those feelings from your childhood, yeah. whatever. Yeah, the car still, you know, it's got that very distinctive smell inside yeah. and all the noises. And it's, you know, it's, it's just really cool to, uh, to be able to experience that and share that with folks. And I just thought, you know, what an experience to be able to do that. And on a night, on top of all the cool stuff that we did with Kevin and his group, yep. it, it was uh, it was just kind of icing on the cake, you know, all together. So, all right. So when you said that in 2005 you got together with your business partner, who the guy you took to uh, to Pocono, he took me. Oh, he took he you. Took right, right, right. He took you along. And I was the analyst, and it was like, hey, you know, you come and be my grunt and check my tire pressures, and I'll let you turn some laps. And um, uh, you know, like I said, my experience is no different than everybody than anybody else's. You you get on a racetrack, you're like, oh, this is something I've always wanted to do. I remember coming home telling my dad, hey, I'm going to, you know, blow off a finance career to become a business owner and, and run a motorsport business. And I think he about fell out of his chair. But um, we've been lucky enough to, you know, you know make some, some cool projects come together. And we had a very... You know, because of the support of my partner, we had a very successful racing uh, history, which allowed me to build a brand out of BGB, and um, it gives you this credibility. So now a lot of guys have come to us. You know, they're like, "Hey, you raced a Cayman in the 24 Hours of Daytona with a 911 engine, and you know, they all knew the story of this car that we slapped together in the shop in like 20 days and made it last for 24 hours, and it it, it basically blossomed into." You know, us, we've lost count as, as to how many 911 engines we shoved in, in Caymans and Boxsters, and it, it turns into an arms race. Now it's four liters and, and, and bigger than four liters, and you're always trying to stay ahead of the curve. But um, the cool thing is is that we try and do a little bit of something for everyone, whether it's, uh, you know, putting a manual transmission in a GT3 RS, which, which we got a lot of press out of a year or two ago because I was the only one dumb enough to sign up for that project and I believe it's the only one like it in the world and then uh, back at the shop I'm trying to do it again you know I left the shop this afternoon we're putting PDK in a GT4 road car and it doesn't exist because there are there are a lot of guys in racing that have injuries uh, that can't drive a manual and, and have a want for PDK and uh, we've, we've built a lot of PDK race cars so it, it's just a question of trying to always figure out what what the market wants yeah. and, and, and I'm happy to be able to, you know, bring things to fruition that, you know, that the market wants. Well, I mean, it's awesome that you, you know, you've gathered all this experience, uh, you know, technical experience, um, experience at the track, experience in just dealing with guys who want to do some crazy things sometimes. And that's not, that's not real easy, right? Because they have expectations they and you're trying to be realistic with them to say, hey, you know, we can do this. It's going to be a journey. I'm going to tell you, it, you know, you got to be ready for the ups and downs, right? I am. And I always forewarn them. I'm like, look, this is a very slippery slope. And there's a good chance your wife or your, your kids are going to hate me because you're going to be gone all the time and you're going to be at the racetrack with this new love of yours. But, um, you know, life lasts a long time and your reputation is all that you have in this industry. So I have, you know, it might be taking me longer to get where I want to be. Um, but I've always, you know, erred on the side of being conservative and trying to make customers last a long time because, you know, there are other shops that try and turn these guys out. And, and, and I need guys to be around for a long time because my business is, is modeled around their being here and bringing cars to us year after year after year. And luckily, uh, I live, you know, 70 minutes from one of the biggest Porsche markets in the country. You know, you, you'd never think, but Orlando is actually a very big Porsche market. I know we're in the top 10. I don't know if we're in the top six or seven. But there are a lot of Porsche owners, and there are a lot of guys that go to uh, Sebring and Daytona and Homestead. And, and, and when you live in paradise and it's warm 12 months a year, you can take your car to the racetrack, whereas everybody north of the Mason-Dixon line is buried under snow for four or five months a year. So this is a, a good place to be when you're trying to build a business like this. Um, and, and we're very fortunate to have a lot of great customers that, that give us good referrals. Uh, I try, you know, the best thing that I would do is you go to the track, find two buddies that like to compete, and you're like, oh, I'm going to make your car faster. And then the guy pulls me aside and like, here, you know, give me a little bit of some, give me some extra sauce to keep him honest. So, uh, you know, we, we have a good time with it. Yeah, it's all good in competition, right? A lot of, a lot of I mean, when you live in Central Florida, it's, it's almost, uh, you take for granted some of this stuff, you know, that people literally will travel from around the other side of the world to come in March to go to the 12 hours of Sebring just to experience 
you know, one of the top three endurance racing events in the world. And people who live here in Central Florida who aren't crazy car guys like you and me or Porsche guys or whatever you want to call it, they don't understand that. They don't get um, just how strong a thing that is in that in that uh, racing community in, in endurance racing that this is a mecca. I mean, it's unbelievable that within the span of a couple of hours, really, or two and a half hours, I guess, maybe between Sebring and Daytona, you have two of the three top races in the world here every year. And you have two of the, you know, two tracks that are just, you know, prolific in a sense that, you know, when you live here and you participate in the community, whether it be with PCA or with guys like you or guys like maybe like Chin Motorsports or you know uh, all these different groups you get to drive on these tracks yeah. and, ex and experience all this stuff right close by which is you know pretty awesome experience no I, I had I had one of those moments like those that know us and follow our social media at BGB Motorsports group on Instagram and our Facebook page know that I'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit click happy with the camera and um, you know a couple weeks ago I was very fortunate I have a couple customers that started with me and I took them PCA club racing and they've grown up into IMSA and uh, one of my customers, Tom Collingwood, was one of the first people to buy one of the new GT4 Club Sport race cars. And I was, you know, uh, very lucky to fulfill a lifelong dream. I got to drive with Tom in the four-hour race the day before the 24-hour. And then 48 hours later, we had the car turned around, and I was headed to Sebring. And I left my house at 5 a.m. to drive down there like I normally do. And I drove by the speedway, and it was all lit up. And I had one of those moments where I'm like, this is really cool. Like, I'm going to drive you know, three hours, and I'm going to go from the center of one of the biggest sports car races in the world, and then I'm going to get to go down to Sebring and test, and then I'm going to get to drive, uh, you know, with my customer the day before the 12-hour, and, um, you know, there are a lot of guys that have been doing this for a long time, and it may they may get used to it after a while, but when you drive in these races and you look around and you're like, oh, my goodness, there are fans. Yeah. Like, there are people out there, yeah. like, watching this stuff. Yeah. Like, you have these kind of really cool moments where you're like, you know, there were many nights that I didn't think that we'd get here, and uh, and it's cool. And you're right; like, you're lucky when you live in Florida, you get to live within three hours of two of the biggest sports car races in the world. And uh, I think we're kind of spoiled down here. Yeah, you know, and that California connection, right? Florida and California are, you know, arguably the two biggest markets maybe in in the United States for Porsche, or at least with you know how crazy people are. I mean, there's other markets around that are that are strong too. But you just think of those because of the linkage with the tracks because of all the California car culture, uh, because of, you know, places like Laguna Seca, uh, you know, and all this kind of stuff that are just, you know, kind of crazy out there experiences for people. Everybody wants to go to Laguna Seca. If you're a sports car guy, that's on your list. Everybody wants to, to uh, either drive on the corkscrew or, you know, be in the stands and watch cars drop down into the corkscrew and, and, and run around that place. So it's just, it's cool that, Florida guys, you know, we get to we get to puff out our chest a little bit with the California guys because they can't say that they got the 24 hours of Daytona and Sebring in their backyard. No, they can't. And uh, <laughs> you know, I, I have to tell you, I only got to live out there for a couple of years. I'm originally from Philadelphia, and when I was just getting into this, it was you know January in the Northeast, and I had to go get a competition license in 2001. So I signed up because I was like, Laguna Seca, you know. Like everybody else, I played it on Gran Turismo. It looks really cool. I want to go out there, and that's where I went, and I got my competition license. But I don't know what the stat is, but there has to be, you know, there has to be more Porsche passion in Southern California than like most places around the world. And if the attendance at Rensport Union is any indication of that, like that is a massive market, and you do have that. You've got that heritage. I mean. God rest his soul. That's where James Dean, you know, he lost his life. He was he was driving on a Friday afternoon from Los Angeles to go to Laguna Seca to race his 550. There's a lot of Porsche passion and heritage in Southern oh, California. Yeah. That's where Porsche Motorsports based, and they, you know, they've had Red Sport Reunion at Lime Rock. They've had it at Daytona, but I think with the amount of turnout that you get in California, I think it's going to stay out there for a while. Oh yeah, no, it's it's absolutely the right place. I'll argue that they need to bring it to Daytona. You know, every now and again. Uh, Ten years. Yeah, maybe more often than that, but at least, you know, get, give the East Coast a chance. But that is just, I mean, you can't, what's a better place than, than Monterey Peninsula, Laguna Seca? It's just, you know, it's just, it's magic. It's, a, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable area, and that's where people want to go. Yep. Uh, so, the weather cooperates. Yeah, yeah, the weather is a little bit 
a little bit better. You never know here, no. you know, in the, in the months that they typically do it, sometimes it can be a little off here. All right, so maybe switch gears a little bit. We're talking about all that kind of stuff, but maybe we go right into this particular car that you yeah. brought out here. Our latest project. So, um, 2017 was kind of a transition period for Porsche. I believe, and somebody might correct me, I could be wrong, but they're really only two models of naturally aspirated Porsches left that you can buy. You can either buy a GT3 or a GT4. And those have naturally aspirated non-turbocharged engines, and I hope to see that they stay that way for a long time. I don't know if that's gonna be the case. However, every Carrera, 911 Carrera that is built after 2017 is now a turbocharged car. It's the same engine in all three models, whether it's the base, the S, or the GTS. And, you know, while my dad warns me that, you know, be careful, you know, a lot of pioneers were found, you know, dead. Um, I like I like to try and be a pioneer with the things that we do in the shop. So I went out and bought this car from Porsche Melbourne and uh, developed a bunch of products for it for the racetrack because, you know, there are guys that love the GT3 for the track, but I think that there are a lot of guys uh, who have some other higher powers to answer to that need, you know, two seats in the back to be able to bring the kids, you know, to and from the local convenience store. So I wanted to uh, to build this car and show that you could take a standard 911 Carrera and show that, you know, with turbocharging, there's plenty of torque and horsepower on top of this car to go to a racetrack and, uh, you know, stop the senseless bullying that I see from GT3 owners. Like, I've become, you know, known among the Cayman circles and the Cayman is slowly beginning to get the horsepower that, that it deserves, but the GT3 still does reign supreme at the racetrack. And uh, those that know me know that I like to try and puff up the underdog a little bit to try and get them to that next step. And this car is no different. It has a bunch of suspension mods, uh, all monoball suspension that you'd find on a cup car, and uh, but very light power mods because for about five or $6,000, we could get this thing up into the 600 horsepower range, which you can't do with a naturally aspirated car. And uh, with my partners from Cobb Tuning that have that have helped me along the way, um, I've developed a lot of uh, ECU flashes for the Macans, and now I'm trying to do it with the turbocharged Carreras. Wow, so that's pretty exciting stuff. Pretty cool stuff indeed. So what's the horsepower on this one? Uh, on the dyno, where and everything goes to the dyno, because I need to back up, you know, I don't make claims, and when I do, they're very conservative but on the dyno it makes over 500 horsepower and but more importantly it makes over 500 pound foot of torque and um, torque is the measure of acceleration and I've spent a lot of years tuning naturally aspirated Porsches and getting you, you know Porsches make great horsepower but getting torque out of a flat six is trying to like sweet squeeze blood from a stone and with these cars you know I like about fell out of the seat when I saw the gains that we make from you know just an exhaust and a flash uh, you know over a hundred horsepower and over a hundred pound foot at the tires just from an ECU flash and an exhaust upgrade whereas on a naturally aspirated car those numbers would be about 15 to 20. Yeah yeah so you, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck if you want to get into yeah. really modifying your car and doing your own thing and and sort of operating outside of the Porsche yeah. the Porsche the, the road less yeah traveled. yeah exactly well that's awesome um, so what is the next What's the next big project for you? Is there something that's coming down the road that, uh, that's even more exciting? I'm, I guess there always is. I mean, that's what you're thinking about, right? Back at the shop, I'm always trying to find other projects that, you know, will incite people to send us their cars. And, and we've been very lucky because of this, this pedigree. I have guys that will send me, you know, cars from all over the country that I've never even met before because they know that we're a trusted name in the industry. So we've got some four liters in the shop. We've got things that are even bigger than four liter uh, that we're building right now. Uh, transmission swaps. But I'm, I'm um, you know, I'm hopeful a lot of GT4 owners that once these cars come out of warranty to go to the track, I want them to send us their cars for more of the safety upgrades. Like the GT4 out of the box, it has the aero, it has the brakes, it has the suspension, the power's there. But some of these guys are are going around places like Sebring and Daytona, you know, doing lap times that 10 years ago would have put you on the front row for the 12 hours of Sebring in the in the lowest GT class, and they need safety upgrades. And um, you know, like I said, I need them to be around for a long time. So we're doing a lot of race car builds of newer generation cars, and then uh, we're doing a lot of service work. There, you know, where we are in Ormond Beach, you're about two hours from any Porsche dealership or an hour and a half. 
and I'm in this kind of triangle where there's this dearth of a, of a Porsche dealership. So we're, we're trying to do anything we can to stay busy. Yeah. And if I'm not, you know, building something cool, I have no problem welcoming a guy in with a 2002 Boxster, you know, that has a leaky coolant tank or something like that. Because, you know, where we are in Ormond Beach, we don't have a lot of Porsche owners. So I tell you, I don't turn anyone away. You know, uh, we may not have the, a, an elaborate facility such as you with your nice new dealership, but maybe I could get a Keurig fired up in the, uh, in, in the lounge area at the shop. Yeah, that, that's it. You got to feed them. Yeah. You got to feed them. You got to give them a drink. And... Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So um, how many guys on your staff? How many people are, work at BGB Motorsports? I have three guys in the shop full time and then uh, a guy in the office with me. Uh, to help handle a lot of the retail movement, selling stuff on the internet. And then um, when we go to the track with four or five customers, I have guys that, that fly in. Like a lot of, a lot of folks don't know that um, a lot of my weekend fly-in guys are guys that dedicate their vacation and their free time. They have full-time jobs, but they love to come to the track and help out. So it's a three or four day weekend. Um, they get to see their old buddies, but you know, I wouldn't, I, I would be lost without the support of my people in the shop and then the support of my guys that when I call them up, I'm like, hey, I got an extra guy. He wants to go to Homestead. We got to go down there with another car. Can you do it? And they're like, yeah, I'll be there. Just tell me when to be there and, and when. And, um, you know, without, without that kind of commitment, we wouldn't be where we are. Well, and that's awesome, dude, because those are the guys who, you know, it's, it's in here. Yes. They want to do it because they just got a, they just got a passion for doing it. Yeah. Um, if they get paid or if they get consideration otherwise that's just like icing on the cake they don't they don't really think about that a whole lot maybe your guys do i don't know but you know you know what i'm saying it's, it's a passion. yeah it's a passion and that's what you know makes it uh all the more special for them just to know that hey they can they can participate yep. they can break away from the normal routine and uh, stay involved yeah, i mean it's a, it's a, it's almost like a working vacation for them it's some of them live in places that there's a where there's a foot of snow on the ground and they're like, hey, are we going to Sebring? Because I looked at the weather and it's 80 and sunny for the next four days. Like, you know, what do you need? And, um, you know, we have, a, we have a good time. Like, I have uh, spent years trying to build the right group of people because, you know, a lot of people have a pretty phenomenal resume. They have a lot of accomplishments. But what I need is... We got, we got somebody over here who's... They're having some fun, huh? Three guys. Anyway, no, um... You know, I have always tried to find the right group of people because I've said, look, I don't care what you've done. I don't care how smart you are. But what I need is I need people that work well together. And we've had instances where we've been stuck at the track till 2 and 3 in the morning. And, and I've been there and I just kind of smile because there are my guys joking and cracking. And, you know, the radio's on and, and they're having a good time. And most people would have like kind of a sour look on their face because they're stuck at the track till 3 in the morning. But these guys, they have the bug. And it's kind of like you're saying, like, I heard this in a movie somewhere. I don't know who said it, but, you know, you can't put it in them and you can't take it out of them. You know, you, you either have it or you don't. Yeah. And if you don't have it and and if it's not a, a pleasure to be there, you know, we don't really want you coming to the track with us. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming in. Thanks. Now, I know that before we got started, uh, Ryan was here. Is he yeah. still here? Is he still, the famous, the famous, is the he still around? Ryan I don't know. Is he still around? We, we, we lost him, maybe. Well, we'll see if he's, I don't know if he's still here, I'll but maybe you can track him down and uh, we can bring him back for a few minutes afterwards. But if I had some haggis, he probably <laughs> Well, again, you know, just want to thank you for coming in. I know the, the, the first time we tried to take a stab at this, it was just uh, it was a, it was a long weekend for you at the yeah. track and then all that kind of stuff. Totally get it. And I'm just glad we were able to work it out this time and have you in to do this. No, it's, it's a real honor to be here. And like I said, if you're in the Central Florida area and you want a new Porsche or used Porsche, you go see Brian at Porsche South Orlando because it is supposedly the coolest dealership in the country. Well, it is a cool place. It's a shameless plug, but I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it every day, all day. I like to give it words, too. All right, cool. Well, thanks, John, for coming on. We really appreciate it. And uh, I think now we're going to have a little piece that's going to show you uh, a little bit about what John's talking about with uh, Porsche South Orlando and a little fun we had out there with the Porsche Club. Going back, I don't know, a month or so ago, we had a, uh, a, a special time on a Sunday morning before we opened. We had a Cars and Coffee event. So this is a little bit of a view into what we did out there that day. So, John, are you, uh, who's on, who's hey. on there back there? Take it over and let's roll. All right, that's what I want to hear. All right, welcome to the Ace Cafe. It's Porsche. 
tonight. And we have somebody that's going to be our host for Porsche. His name is Brian Cheney. He told me to say that he's a Porsche enthusiast. I don't know why he wants me to say that. He said in about 1980, if I get this right, he was working with the IMSA race group and he was racing cars. And I met, he'll tell you the story, but I met him by accident through my son and he's probably sorry that he did. Brian, come on out. <laughs> All right, here's Brian. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to him. It's his show, be nice to him. Um, you know, he's, he's got a passion about Porsche as well. And uh, so how, how'd you find out about Ace Cafe first? Uh, I actually first heard about the original Ace through my dad. Originally back in the 60s. Wow. So, cycles. so the original Ace Cafe in England. Yeah. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Ace Cafe started over in uh, over in the UK, and now we're here in the US. So what did he tell you about Ace Cafe uh, back then? Uh, a lot of illegal stories of drag racing and things that you, you weren't supposed to be doing, but a good time with motorcycles. So kind of carries on. Okay. So he was a bike guy. And uh, were you a bike? Were you a bike guy too? And are you always no, just been a my, car my guy? My mom was an ER nurse growing up, so she was gonna kill me at first. So no motorcycles. Okay, all right. So she wanted to keep you safe, keep you, <laughs> yeah. keep you in, keep you in order, right? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, what we're gonna try to do here for the next few months is talk to you a little bit about Porsche, uh, the sort of the history and heritage of Porsche. Yeah, it's just an awesome place here, the Ace Cafe. Um, I heard about it through the guys at Cycle Fever TV and came out here one night uh, a couple of months back and watched them do their thing and just really fell in love with the place pretty much instantly. Came out here with my wife, Leslie, and, and uh, we had just a blast with these guys. You know, there's so much history uh, of this property and there's a lot of history with Ace Cafe and it's just exciting to be able to start to uh, share that with everybody here in the uh, Orlando Central Florida area. Thanks for coming in tonight and talking to us about your little treasure here, this 1965 356C, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Brian. Uh, I, uh, Brian said, where did I get the bug? Uh, my brother and I were in the Navy in California over 40 years ago, and he had a Speedster, which I drove a lot. So I just, I, I caught the bug, you know, driving around Southern California in a Speedster. Didn't get any better back then. So uh, when I got out of the Navy and uh, uh, got married uh, a few years later, I bought a 1964C Coupe. That was my first Porsche, and I drove it to work. And, you know, I really, it was not something I just drove on the weekends. I drove it to work every day. Don't need much when it's time to pack. We ride for causes and charities. From Boggy Creek, uh-huh, to the Florida Keys. We're riding country roads, enjoying the day. We're riding for the love of the U.S. of A. We're flying our colors, enjoying the view. With pride we ride for the red, white, and blue. So catch a cycle fever, don't let it slip away. We're rocking the blues, it's a bike away. Yeah, yeah, the bike away. Hey, welcome everybody. We're here at Porsche South Orlando the largest Porsche dealer in the world. And we are out here filming today, and I gotta tell you, the crowd is really, really big out there. It's by invitation only, and they're gonna run from 10 to 12 is their grand opening, and then they're gonna open for business at 12 o'clock today. So if you're around, you need to come by, you gotta see this place. Like I said before, it's the largest Porsche dealer in the world. So come on by, take a look, enjoy. Hey. And Brian Cheney tells me to ask everybody to bring their uh, wallets with them. He'd like to sell you a new Porsche. All right, let's go back see the crowd. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Who's excited about today? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Who's all excited about Porsche? Woo! <laughs> If anybody wants to come and talk about their car, they're more than welcome to. 
And in the driveway is the Subaru and the truck. Everybody. Looks like a great crowd here. They open the doors at 10 o'clock sharp. Everybody's walking around. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take and show you some of the crowd that's here today and enjoy yourself. And pretty soon they're going to start the tour. And when they do the tour, we'll film the tour also. And we'll hopefully we can get it out. And we will be back in a minute. But now, let's just go see the crowd. All right, so we're back at Porsche night. We have some new guests, and you know, any anytime we do Porsche night out here, I've learned to expect the unexpected. And uh, you know, you just gotta. I said on our last broadcast, last broadcast that I did out here, you got to keep the Porsche faith because you never know what's going to happen. You just got to have some fun and, and and roll with it. And tonight, I met you, Sean, and your dad, um, Amir, right? Yes. yes. And. Uh, and someone suggested that I talk to you guys, and I'm like, well, what's up? And they said, well, because they got this really cool Porsche over here, and uh, you think you'd be interested to talk with them. So when I saw it was a GT2 RS, I said, well, absolutely, let's talk to these guys. Yeah. So I know you got uh, a friend on here, Phil, too, and we'll, and we'll get to Phil in just a minute. But um, I heard that you're a car guy, but not necessarily a Porsche guy. Your dad right, got right. this car. It's sort of a family deal. Yes. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about... Oh wow, we got the trains going by here. See what I mean? You got to learn to expect That's the unexpected. Orlando this this is this is Orlando right here. So, how did you guys get involved in cars? Is this this probably isn't the first car your 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 dad's had, right? Right. So, I mean, my passion for cars, you know, was stemmed from my father. He he bought a, a 95 uh, Dodge Viper back in the day and, you know, I was a little baby back then. I was a little kid pretty much and uh he punched it and took off and that's when my joy for cars was my addiction was created pretty much so um you know ever since then it's been you know he loves porsche i love porsche as well i i drive a chevy zl zl1 at the moment okay. actually but uh you know 
this is a uh, it's just beautiful cars. So yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Where my addiction came from. So so how did he start with? Is this his first Porsche? No, no. So he actually has a 2008 uh, 911 twin turbo with the Schweitzer package. It's got a roughly 800 horsepower to the wheel. So he's used to the power, you know. And it's it's a, it's a fun car, just like this one. It's just a little, you know, it's a little older. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was that was his start. So this is Porsche number two. Yeah, correct. Okay, mm -hmm. so for Porsche guys, that's pretty amazing, right. right? Your second Porsche is a GT2 RS. You know, this is a the, a monster Porsche, right? Oh, yeah. We're talking about unbelievable horsepower, unbelievable right. technology in this car. So maybe talk a little bit about this. So what's been your experience so far with this GT2 RS? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's it's top of the line. You know, I mean, as far as power goes, you know, I have a you know, like I said, a ZL1, so it's got roughly 650 horsepower to the crank but this thing right here I mean it just throws you back in a different manner you know it's it's torquey it's got power all through the rpm range um, you know the YSEC package is light uh, carbon fiber everywhere handles like you know no other pretty much it's 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 an unbelievable car it's a work of you know art pretty it, much it is a work of art it truly is a work of art you can I remember the first one that I saw I had another gentleman on the show a few months ago who is a proud owner of a GT2 RS, oh, wow. and I remember seeing that car when it was first delivered, and I just looked over it for, you know, the longest time, right. just looking at all <laughs> the little details, you know, because when you glance at it the first time, you don't pick up everything, so that's pretty cool. So, what's been, what have you guys done with the car so far? Have it, has it just been, you know, street touring, or have you done any track events with it, or what? what's, what's the story of the car so far? Unfortunately, we don't make it out to too many Porsche Club America events, but, uh, you know, so far, it's been really parked in the garage. You know, we're letting it just sit for now. But, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, it, it, we've we've actually gotten it wrapped just to be protected for when we do take it out on the track uh, by Phantom Motorsports. Right here's Phil. Uh, he's actually the one that did the full expel wrap, kept it, you know, nice and, and uh, pretty much protected from any of the, the chips or anything that could occur. So we, you know, we made sure to protect the vehicle before taking it out. Well, cool. That's a perfect segue. So, Phil, it's, it's awesome when you can... You know, we're talking about a car here. We're talking about a lot of money in this car. Right. So most people don't realize, but you know, this is this is over a quarter of a million dollars for this car. Right. Um, you know, it, it's 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 insane technology. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And when you are combining all of that and putting a car on the streets of Orlando, for example, yeah. with the I4 <laughs> Ultimate project going on, you got to protect it, right? right exactly. So you insert Phil. So Phil, you said you're with Phantom Motorsports, Phantom Motorsports. and you guys do. So maybe just tell us a little bit about your business. Well, what we do pretty much, we're a one-stop shop. We do everything from customizations on vehicles, paint jobs. We do vinyl wraps. We do liquid wraps. We do Expel. We're a certified Expel dealer. Mm -hmm. And about this vehicle, our client, Amir, called us up. He's like, hey, I got exciting news. I got a Porsche GT2 coming in. I'm like, let me know when you get it. I'll make <laughs> sure I'll meet you at the shop. We'll take it in. We'll clean it up, we'll protect it head to toe, so then you won't have any worries whatsoever when you drive it. So and that's what happened. He picked it up that same night. He called me, it was like eight o'clock at night. He goes, are you available? Let's come on in. Yeah. <laughs> Brought in and we did our magic to it. We did a full body wrap on this vehicle. So now he can enjoy the vehicle. It's 100% protected head to toe. So now he can enjoy it and don't have to worry about nothing. Yeah, right. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you know, to be able to, to do that for someone who's just made such a huge investment in a car, uh, it's just the smart thing to do. Whether you are going to put it on the street or you're going to put it on the track, there's going to be stuff bouncing your way in front of these cars. And so, it, you know, it's just a great thing to do. It's a great investment. Absolutely. Um, and, and really... You know, with this, with these packages of the ceramic coating too. I mean, it's it's so much easier, I guess, to keep the car clean. The whole cleaning process improves. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. You know, what's the benefit of the ceramic coating? Oh yeah. Well, the benefits with the Expel is obviously you don't have to worry about the paint chips. It can take the impacts without a problem. It's self-healing also. So if you do hear a big chip or something, don't need to fear because it will self-heal. It'll go back to normal like nothing ever happened. And then when it comes, comes time for the coating, all you have to do is just wash it. You don't even have to rub any kind of like, you know, materials or anything on the finish. Mm -hmm. It would just take all the greases and all the dirt off of the vehicle. Wow. And then you can just rinse it, dry it off with a, with a blower or something, and that's it. You're good wow. to go. That's awesome. So 
so it's cool to have you out here. So I'm glad we're able to give the give the business a little bit of a plug here tonight. You know, I mean, you guys, you guys, you guys have an awesome client here with Amir and Sean. And you know, that was the first thing they said when when uh, we started talking about having them come on tonight. They're like, well, hey, let's have Phil on too because you know he did an awesome job on our car. So that that's pretty cool. So that tells you right there the kind of relationship that you have, right? Which is pretty cool. So you said this is the first Porsche Club event that you did. How did you guys get introduced to the Porsche Club? Well, we've been a part of the Porsche Club for a while. We just haven't been able to make it to, to really too many events. Um, but we, you know, we've we've consistently kept track of it, and you know, just seeing all the beautiful cars that have come to all the events. Um, but over time, we've just been busy with with life, I guess, in general. The kids, you know, we got a bunch of kids, so okay. uh, you know, it's just uh, it's it just keeps us busy there. So. So here's here's my question of the night. Okay, what's the youngest kid? Oh, you don't have any rear seats in this one, or do you? No. Well, I mean, there's a there's a spot for a car seat, but I don't know if I throw <laughs> a kid in there. <laughs> okay. How about the twin turbo 911? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kids have rode in the ZL1, the 911. You know, they've rode in all the cars. They're all racers, just like us. So you know, they love it just you know just as much as we do. I mean, actually, my daughter, she just went to the Daytona 500 with her papa. So. You know, she had a, a wonderful time there and, and had a, you know, a blast pretty much. Best experience for her ever. So we're, we're really glad to be, be able to, re, you know, raise kids that enjoy the same thing we do and, yeah. and all that. So Well, that's cool. So that's our car. My wife and I's 89 Targa. So it's a classic Porsche. Beautiful. She drove this car every day to work yeah. uh, for 10 years. Uh, took our kids to gymnastics and to school and back <laughs> yeah. and forth and you know they grew up riding in the back seat of that car and That's then awesome. as one got a little bit bigger you know one would ride in the front one would ride in the right, back right. but you know they grew up around Porsche they grew up around you know hearing all those sounds and smelling all those smells yep. in, in the in the classic cars you know there's a distinct smell to the leather in a Porsche Absolutely. all the different sounds of the vehicle so it's cool I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, the kids in your family are getting infected with the Porsche bug just like you guys uh, have been infected by it so I just want to thank you guys for you know on such a short notice I mean we literally just met what and 45 minutes or an hour ago and um, you know truth be told when you bring a car like this out to an event like this it get, does get some attention it does, so yeah. um, you know Props to the car for getting you on the show, right? Yeah, thank you so much for <laughs> but uh, yeah, we really appreciate you having you know, coming on. Hopefully, we'll see you guys out here at Ace much more with Porsche Definitely. Night, Definitely. and encourage you guys, you know, to continue to stay involved in the club. Whether it's social, whether it's track time, whether it's you know technical information, right. uh, the PCA is a, is an awesome club. It you is. know, it's the largest single brand car club in the world. More right. people are members of the PCA than any other car club anywhere. Of any brand, yeah. and it's a tool, uh, it's a tool it, for Porsche, really. I mean, you know, a lot of people can use it as a as a tool, you know, form a, a, a hobby, and, and it's just a great way to, to meet new people and everything. So. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It is a lot of fun. All right, well, I think that's pretty much going to wrap us up here tonight. I don't know. There was a couple of guys that we were going to talk to a little bit earlier, but I think they've gone off there having too much fun with cars. <laughs> so I think we're just going to wrap it up tonight from Porsche Night here at the Ace Cafe. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and uh, supporting us over time out here. Come out and see us the third Monday of every month. We're out here at the Ace sharing the Porsche passion, you know, just sharing good times with everybody and, uh, and having a great time out at the Ace. So, again, that wraps us up for Porsche Night this month. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. you're welcome. It. Yeah, it's it. cool.